Hi, and welcome to our podcast, Unmuzzled Conversations, where we're having a nostalgic, humorous views from 1940s to the present day, covering the subjects of the time of Glasgow, looking back. So put the kettle on or pour yourself a drink, relax and spend some time with us. We're going back in time, looking at the old Glasgow. And today... This is episode seven, and we are covering uh, Scottish football. Um, my name is Christine. This is Stuart to my Hello. right. And as, as always, we've got lovely Tommy with us as well Hi. today. All joining in the podcast, and we're all going to get stuck into talking about Scottish football. So if you don't mind, I just wanted to start by looking at something that I had researched that I didn't know anything at all about, which is that... Um, historically, now you can tell me if this is right or wrong, guys, because you obviously know a lot more than me, that um, it is said that clan members in the in the 1860s were playing football in uh, church grounds. I don't know that, I've seen that, that, that's, that's, what, that's what Google told me. And then around about the 1860s, it was brought into Glasgow. And so uh, that's when round about Glasgow, uh, that's when uh, the Glasgow... Sorry, that's when Queen's Park Football Club was founded to mm. be the very first football club uh, in Glasgow. Um, and in fact, Glasgow and Scotland were the inventors of football. Certainly the inventors mm. of, of the modern game of football. Yeah, they were. yeah. Is that your understanding as well, uh, yes, Tommy? Yes, and uh, obviously the, before the clubs were finally formed, like Queen's Park starting there, <laughs> There was the, the it was played on Glasgow Green. Oh really? Yeah. There before was lots, there was any. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, eventually Glasgow Green. Is this became, going back to before 18, 1860 uh, yes, then? Yes, really? Yeah. Yes, before and before that. Were there different versions of football from what we would see today, or was it much the same kicking a ball? I, I think kind it was basically the, the same rules. Not would be the yeah. same rules, Christine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because when, when rugby when rugby started, you know, it started at rugby school. I can't remember the guy's name. It's a famous name, and he picked the ball up and ran with it, and they called it rugby football after that. So that I think that was something like the eighteen forties. But England was wow. the first country to actually, you know, to nail it down and and form the football association, and have you know cup games, recognised cup games, and then league games. When, Scottish when, players are miles ahead, though, because a lot of them were brought down to England to play, and that was the case for a long, long time. It was actually a Scottish man who went to Brazil and and started football in Brazil, sweet. and sweet. all these other all these countries of the empire, they all played at football, and then the Europeans realised that this is a smashing game. Let's get into it. So it was started in the UK and organised, I think, firstly to the English public school system. Yes. And then, other, you know, the, the workers saw it and thought, this is great, you know, and get into it and then became organised as well. So it says here that the oldest Scottish uh, football club was Celtic, apart from what no, we said. No, it was said. Queen's Park. Apart from Queen's Park. No, it was, oh, sorry, it was the oldest ground that's still going right. was Celtic Park. Right, OK. And after that came Rangers, came uh, Ibrox. Well, a, a, Ibrox, a couple I, of I, years was Ibrox later. built in 1910 or something. There was 1899. Was it? OK. And uh, uh, one Celtic or Park, 19, mm. 1872, 1892. So like seven years between the two uh, stadiums. Originally played in Glasgow Green. Yeah. Celtic Raiders, did. And I think, other, oh, I think lots of clubs played in Glasgow Green. They played at a, the, the, what's it, the cricket, the cricket, what's it called? Yes. In Partick. In Partick. Cricket Aye. Club. Uh -huh. the, the cricket, cricket club ground. Uh -huh. Because it's a huge ground. Ah, it's a huge area. Yeah. Uh -huh. They played there uh -huh. for a few years until uh -huh. I think they built Ibrox. But they, they did exist before mm -hmm. Ibrox was built. So, I mean, I didn't know that, 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 that football was really originated here. So well, it wasn't originated here, but it, but it seemed to be the best players mm -hmm. in the UK were Scottish players because they were all, I, th I think, I remember reading about like Everton, about nine of the 11 players were Scottish and it was the same with all the successful teams. And mm -hmm. what year are you talking about? Well, the 18, 1800s, yeah, 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 right. the 1880s, 1890s, right, right up to the Great War. The vast majority of players in England were Scottish players. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that would be. I, re I really don't know. Maybe they were more adept at the game. I don't know. But there was a different Scottish style. of, And there was a smashing film called The English Game. Have you seen it, Tommy? 
and no. it's, it's, it's a great film. very very good and it's really like the good. 1880s or something and it, it just saying that all the the game is amateur you weren't allowed to be professional so that that's why like teams in Scotland like Renton for instance that don't exist mm -hmm. they won the league one year or they you know they jointly won the league because everybody was amateur so you right. would just get the best local players but so in England you couldn't you would be struggling to travel down to England uh, you know because why would you go you, you but the, what they did was they gave you a better job so whoever owned the club would probably own a factory or something like that but then when it became professional a vast majority of players in England were Scottish. All the top clubs have been Scottish players, yeah. It's funny then that, that you <coughs> just said that England put together the first uh -huh. kind of... Association. Yeah, we club. had. So we weren't really organised. We just no. had really good... We had really good... Uh, we weren't as really organised. players, yeah. We organised as early. Uh -huh. So I, I was uh, doing a wee bit of research and talking about what the Scottish League was like. It's sort of in the 1980s. But maybe before that, you and Tommy could tell us about your own experiences mm -hmm. of going, you know, being young boys when you went to see your first match and what the terraces were like then and, you know, to give us a kind of an idea by comparison to how they are now. Primitive. Yeah. Primitive then. Mm -hmm. right. Really. Terrible pitches as well. Yeah, terrible pitches, terrible, as I say, just simply standing, standing room, mostly. And it there must have been cold as well. People, there was always some, as, as some as, at one seated area, the stand, but that was only for people with money. Uh -huh. yeah. you know, no, so the ordinary nobody, no person. Working, no working class uh -huh. man uh -huh. could afford to sit in the stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, so there was thousands and thousands of people Must going have been to hard all the to various people, grounds. Though, eh? in, you know, with the, ground. the rain and the winter. That's right. I mean, <clears throat> you know, it was also very, very violent. Really? It really was. It was atrocious, and and it's hard to believe now that you know your people would walk in with carriers quite legally. Yeah, you, know, you could. I remember seeing guys with two with two bags, and some of them would even have you know mostly cans, but some people would even have whiskey bottles and things like. That. No bottles of whiskey, and and so the guys mm. absolutely steaming. You yeah. know they were lying in the, literally in the gutter at uh -huh. quarter to five when the games uh -huh. were finished. And of course, you get any you know the violence would be made worse by that. And I, I remember, do you remember by the nineteen seventies? See all the all the kids used to go down the front, and they were wearing a you know crash hats at the time, and they used to paint them the team colours. Why were they wearing crash hats? Because people were throwing cans and bottles and all sorts of things for the further, you know, the top. I was just going to say, you see, were the kids there with their parents, but there was an area for the, them. If you went, you, you always no, went away. You always went with, with your, your dad. Pals. But right. you would go yeah. down the front and, you know, get a better view. If you, if the, the, the thing about, a, a, about the security or lack of it then was that it was Glasgow Police. There was no... Security as yeah. there is now, yeah. which is all private security yeah. Yeah. people that that, uh, that actually do all the, all the various uh, jobs, security jobs in stadiums now. Whereas then it was the police did the whole all football was policed by by policemen who were paid usually overtime. Uh, the to, clubs and the clubs, the clubs had to paid them, had to, pay them. To, had to pay them to patrol the grounds, and they went round and round. And they uh, because so it would just up, be after the game, no, during, no, the game. During, during the game, game they right. went round and round the outside perimeter right. of of the pitch. Uh -huh. And if he, the 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 uh, it was quite funny at the time, but, but now when I think about it, because as a kid you wanted to be at the front, have a right. So if you went to your dad, say, especially when you, eventually when you were old enough, you would go at the front and you could sit on the at the, at the front of the terrace and in between in between the police that when the, the space between the police, you would put your legs over and you would be sitting on the edge with your legs over, right? And the next cop would say, "Get the bloody legs in." <laughs> I ah, was verboten, right. verboten to and do they that. And your legs had to go back in, right? <laughs> and then you wait till you went by and the legs went back out again. The next one, we are told to get your legs in. The next time I'm going to... <laughs> and, and so, you know, they were always shouting at you for oh, kids for putting their legs yeah. over, mm -hmm. over the wall. So is that how it all would start? Your own dad would take you? Is normally, normally, I it, it began. And, and, there, and there was a boy's gate. It wasn't a girl's gate. It was always no girls. No. 
No, go. nobody would go. Did was, you say something about the, there was no toilets? No female, no female, no female toilets uh, on on the, on the terracings. There yeah. probably was in the seated areas, mm -hmm. right? But there was definitely only gents' toilets in in the, the terracings. Uh -huh. In fact, when I first went, I first went in the early sixties, just as a wee kid, and I don't ever remember seeing a woman or a girl in the terracing. Ever. Mm. Later on I did. I mean mm -hmm. in the seventies by the time uh, you and I were I, I going. Don't... It was occasionally somebody would bring their girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But it was it was pretty crude and it was it was pretty But by that time we would notice as women. As women. <laughs> 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 no. You didn't notice many there though. No, no. <laughs> and you were telling me one time about you were at a football match and it was so cold that you that people were lighting fires in the Well that, that was the, the the infamous game, the the hundredth anniversary of the first Scotland England International. Which, which was worth mentioning. It was the first ever international in the world. Scotland and England played it's, it, about, I don't know what, 80? It was 50 years ago. It was 150. 150 years ago. Aye, it must have been in 1882 or 1872 because we went in 1972. It was something like February. Right. And it wasn't very well attended, surprisingly enough. And it was so cold. It was something like the coldest night in five years. And it was so cold that people were lighting fires at the terrace in Hamden. And we also got humped five nothing. Wasn't it a good night? Yeah. As, as you say, there was a, the, the the facilities were very very poor, but we the good we could before before the boys' gate you could get lifted over in the mm -hmm. turnstiles. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So that, that you could actually stand outside, um, and uh, and ask somebody. You lift me over, you know, lift me I over, would. mister. Aye. Lift me over, mister. So you were you know, getting for nothing then? Aye. Aye. Yeah, I'm getting for nothing. That uh -huh. was 25 when I was getting lifted <laughs> over. Then you were 26, you were just getting lifted. I was still getting, <laughs> <laughs> still getting in the boys' gate quite late in my life. I did, as well. I did as well. It's worth saying, though, that, that, that Scotland, I, I, I recall in the 50s and the 60s, Scotland were, were good. Scotland, they weren't a match for Brazil or maybe Germany, but they were a match for England and they were a match for most people. And and the, and the Scottish clubs, you know, Rangers and Celtic, like Kilmarnock and Dunfermline and Dundee, Dundee United, they they did quite well in Europe. They were they were really humped, like they would now. I mean, you know, even Rangers and Celtic just get slaughtered in the big league now. But they, they were really well. They could they were competitive. You would have to say they were competitive. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I have to say this as a Rangers man, that Celtic did something that nobody else has ever done. Well, first of all, they won the Europe Cup, European Cup, nineteen sixty seven. And they, they lost in a final, I think, in 1972 or 71, I can't remember. But either way, for about five or six years, they were genuine contenders for the European Cup. Mm -hmm. Genuine contenders. And unfortunately, we never were. Mm -hmm. We won a European competition, but it was a touch and go. But they, they, they do deserve credit for that, and I would always give them that. I wanted to mention Hamden as well, because I was looking at some research that told me there was a time when Hamden was known to be or thought of as the very best stadium one of the largest and the best stadiums in the UK. Well, it certainly wasn't the biggest in the yeah. UK, but a long, long way. Well, what era is that, Stuart? Did you say the <sighs> 50s, maybe? Well, if you think about it, it was, it was really a question of how many you could cram in. And it was just the biggest area, and so they did cram it in. And I don't know when it was. It was a, there was a year they got 149,000 mm -hmm. a Scotland v England game. I don't know when that would be. Would it be the 30s or the 40s, maybe? 149,000 is incredible. Wow. There was no limit, no but, crowd limit. No, and, and I mean, it was, was the tickets. Was, uh, you just paid in. They, they just they just paid in, and there was no crowd limit. No. I mean, even at, even at all grounds, they would, no, they would never have a crowd limit in the terracings. Mm -hmm. you know, there was nobody counted who went in or out. Yeah, as care. long as if you're happy the money, to take the money, yeah. I mean, and I'm sure there was a lot of people that were happy to take the money. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of people that were happy to take the money. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of people that were happy to take the money. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of people that were happy to take the money. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of people that were happy to take the money. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was so busy. It was a it was a Wednesday night. It was a cup semi final. Uh, it was a cup semi. We are went through, and we had the the, the old band. We had we had all the guys that played in bands. Where, it, where there was about five groups in the in the van. With it was a bit well, about twelve years anyway. I don't know, maybe it was five groups, but certainly about twelve, at least twelve guys that we, that we all crammed into the van and went through, and. I don't think I saw the game because I never it was saw so the game. Wee. I right. never saw the game either. It right. was just a sway of people, and it's incredible nobody was injured. It was, a, a, and we didn't even know the score. It would be it was one nothing by the time we get in, and fortunately nobody scored any more goals. 
Rangers won one nothing. That great. Well, I just say I just it was I a replay. That was at the first saw. game with my dad. Right, I remember that. Aye. Right. Well, I never saw. Uh, so I remember not seeing at the game and driving all that way through with all these guys. Or saying, and I was. I remember. I was driving. I was the designated driver. Lucky uh, and you. the rest were all. The rest were all bumming. All you know, the cans were popping, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and, and I say, I, I, and I, I remember we clam we to actually clamber up a grass bank to get to the back of the terrace, and right, and, and I could never, you know, it was <laughs> running around the back of people, and I just saw heads up and around, never saw a thing, uh, and it, it could have been so dangerous, we never saw the danger, yeah. never noticed. We're all young men, and, uh, so uh, nobody worries about it, you know. But I, I, I say it could have been. It could have been quite dangerous at the time. I think it's worth mentioning as well. And another, I, I don't know if this still stands. It must be the biggest in Britain anyway. The biggest ever crowd for a, a game between two clubs was a Rangers Celtic game at Ibrox. I think it was 1939. And it was 119,000 at it. You know, when you think, we were there when it was 70,000, 80,000. It was Aye. mobbed. That was and, and, and that was better then. You know, you think, God knows what it must have been like 40 years before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awful. That, but again, the, the, the Scottish football was quite successful. You know, the clubs, I mean, again, I remember Kilmarnock doing well, and but, it, you know, obviously things have deteriorated quite a lot since, since then. Also, the price of football. Yeah. Football was, I don't know, what did, what, were you, what did you pay as an adult in the 60s? About two and six or something to get in? It's about 15 pence or something. Yeah. It wasn't much anyway. It wasn't, it's not it wasn't much money, now. Yeah. It's, it's quite serious cash. I mean, you had uh, clubs like the uh, Third Lanark, for example, Aye. were right next to Hamden. And the, the the ground's still there. The Third Lanark actually they they were they were a competitors. They had a great Aye. team at one time. Uh, Hilly, Harley, and Gray were the were the forwards mm -hmm. at that time. And he this a dead dead small goalkeeper called Jockey Robertson. Oh, yeah. And um, he and he, he you know he was like a, he could bounce about like a kangaroo. He was a he was he was really quite small nowadays. They're all blooming. Huge Giants. guys, the huge guys, uh -huh. but uh, they were they they actually were threatening to win the league at the time. Mm -hmm. They were they were well up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's worth saying. Tommy and I often joke about it. It's worth saying though that how totally immoral football is. There is no morality whatsoever in football. Some of the chants to players were outrageous, and some of the that we Tommy and I are season ticket. It was quite near like, like what we would call the Celtic end, was the opposition end. And, and when, when Aberdeen, you know, up to the 1990s, Aberdeen were a pretty successful team. You know, Alex Ferguson, Ferguson was there and they won a European competition. They were doing, they were doing really well. They won a couple of leagues. And I remember going, and we used to call them, because they came to Aberdeen, we used to call them sheep shaggers. And the, and the crowd was, the Rangers crowd were going, mm. sheep shagging bastards, you're all sheep shagging <laughs> bastards. And the Aberdeen supporters all joined in and they had blow up Sheep, sheep <laughs> bastards, <laughs> and they had sheep. toy sheep, and, and they were told about them. Going, we are sheep shagging <laughs> bastards. <laughs> we are all sheep, sheep shagging <laughs> bastards. <laughs> so that took that took the wind out of your sails. How can you wind them up with it? But some of the stuff was totally outrageous. And as you know, as we've said before, if if Gary Glitter could score goals for midfield, somebody would sign mm -hmm. him because they just don't care. And I know that you know terrible things have happened with footballers, and there's all sorts of horrible cases. And you know people have rightly jumped in in them, but people who are supporters really they don't really care. They really don't. I mean, as I said, Pablo Escobar, the late Pablo Escobar, had bought any Rangers, he'd have been welcomed. You know, come on in, Pablo. Have you got your checkbook with you? You know, Absolutely. we'll rename the stadium Casa Pablo Escobar. That's you know, the Cartel Stadium. <laughs> That's right. They call it the Cartel Rangers if you like. You know, but honestly, that really is. They're totally ruthless, and he would sign anybody. They would do anything, and of course, they, they, they give lip service to when court cases arrive, but the directors and the, the supporters of their club, they really don't care. You know, so there's, there's a lot of you know, negative things about football as well. But uh, the game itself, I think, is wonderful. I, I get really emotional. Even, and you even, even like, like ladies football now, Stuart? I, I, watch, I watch the, 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 Are you watching the ladies football? Yes, I, I think that it's, it's fantastic how things have developed mm -hmm. from, from what it was to what it is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. It's developed and it's developed as much because people have realised how financially uh, it, 
it's 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 a blooming cash cow. Uh, but also the, 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 the caliber remote. of the female players, I think, is very high. Aye. But also the, yeah. the, the, their morality is is <laughs> much better. You, know, you don't see any of the kind of Nancy boy stuff. That, that, that male ones do you see these guys getting in hurpling about you see these lasses you know getting real getting cracked just cut up and got on with it and, and, and there's a, a thing I saw on Facebook and it's called it was something like the 10 worst tackles in female football and I can't remember I remember the top three and number three was this forwards running through and a, a defender grabs a bit of ponytail and yanks her straight down off red card another one the, the, the forward is coming towards the defender and the defender jumps up and drop kicks her. She actually drop kicked her near the neck and the chest straight down. She should have got to jail for that. And the last one was two players were fighting and one was choking the other one. She was on top of her, her competitor and she was squeezing her throat. And you think, Jesus Christ, these lasses are no kidding. You know, they're, they're really full on. So that, 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 that well, they're completely committed to, totally to what committed they're doing. I, now, I say, and take no prisoners. Also, uh, also, eventually they'll uh, eventually they'll go and strike because they'll need to get they'll get they'll go for more money. Eventually, they'll do the tennis or whatever. Everybody else in the golf, you know, these girls that have that have. Uh, but they have to seen, bring in the money first, do they not? That, I mean, it's all about revenue, bit, isn't it? With, well, and 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 the. Uh, in England, in particular, what was it? The one of the two of the London clubs played uh, at Wembley. Uh, they told it, didn't they? Uh, and uh, it's I, it was a very, bit, very popular. I, uh, yeah, uh, it, was, it was. It was absolutely jam packed. And I yeah. think football in, in Scotland and generally in the UK has become more of a family thing. Or oh, they're yes. trying to make it more of a family thing. So when you think about how, what they're trying to do now and have succeeded um, mostly compared with what you've described when you were wee boys going to Absolutely. You know, terraces. You consider the corporate. I've been to a yeah. few corporate things yeah. that they do now. And it's, say, it, the, the catering is fantastic. Mm-hmm. As opposed to the catering that we knew on the terracings. Was there a pie stand there when you were that age, or was was that not a thing then? There might be. Yes, there probably was. There would be one, you know, one pie. I remember there was a one at Ibrox. There was one pie stand. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Now you can imagine. I only remember there being one, one catering outlet <laughs> for thousands and thousands of people mm. there, there uh, as opposed to but you had the entrepreneurs on the terracing who <laughs> come in and uh, th- this is a, this thing about Stuart saying about get, taking carry outs to the football and lifting wee boys over and getting in for free all that sort of thing nowadays nowadays uh, uh, that's all stopped Whereas then you would have uh, the guys who the the huge entrepreneurial catering outlet was there yeah, the macaroon bars and spearmint chewing gum, right? <laughs> that, that, that was a choice. That, that was, was that a choice. Right? I don't know why that would be the, why <laughs> exactly. Why you know, no they, bounty they, bars they, and Mars right? bars and no, that's, that's not, too funny. No, that's that's a macaroon. macaroon bar or a or chewing gum. You know, I, you, know you can see what well, you could maybe get a bit of sustenance from a macaroon bar, but the chewing gum, I don't go. And uh, we, Stuart and I went to, we were at Hamilton Aki's uh, 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 one game, and the, this guy comes in with this gigantic egg box uh, with a, the string around it. And he had the, he had the, the spearmint chewing gum, and the macaroon bars, the spearmint chewing gum, and the spam rolls. Oh. Rolls and spam. Yeah, the rolls and spam there. Right? So he's got this egg bog full of, you know, he's got biology. And you, the guy was cleaned out yeah. of rolls and spam. Yeah. Just absolutely, just, you know, the old pink lint, as they aye, called aye, it. Aye, my the, dad used the, to call it that. The pink lint aye, uh, aye. On, on the rolls. Yeah. And the, the guy, that they Absolutely, the guy, the guy's probably got a Merc now, oh, you know, and I don't doubt owns, it. owns a, a top restaurant I somewhere. I don't doubt it. You know? uh-huh. From humble <laughs> beginnings, <laughs> eh? <laughs> but I mean, again, you, you got to look back. It's, I mean, because of the standard of football in Scotland is so poor now in comparison, 
go to Europe because they all got humped first, first, second round. Everybody's, everybody's out. There's, there's a lot of competitions now. Mm -hmm. Never used to be. And it was too maybe to let teams, the f one and two would always get into some competition. But now there's like three and four, three and something fourth in the league that get into competitions and get hammered. Again, it, it's worthwhile saying that in the past that wasn't the case. Scotland, but there was just oh, Dundee United. I remember Dundee United back in the 80s. They beat Barcelona yeah. home and away. Yeah. And Aberdeen had some great, you know, great uh, games in Europe and then Fernland, Kamar, you know, Kamar, did really, really well. And and amazingly, now that, now that the, the players seem to be trained better, the conditions are better, the team, the team, you know, the Scottish teams are worse. And the Scottish international team, although they've done quite well up, you know, recently, they, they were really, really poor. They were getting humped by everybody and playing badly. That was Aye, the thing. So it, wasn't as if, it wasn't as if they were playing adventurous football and getting beat. They were being defensive and getting beat. Real boring, boring stuff, you know. But uh, when we went, we, Tommy and I were going a lot in the 70s. Well, we were going right up to the 90s. I was, until I moved away. But I remember that I, w I was at a game and it was a great boring game and kind of looking about and thinking, there was no, no men over 40 here. It was all young men. I just remember a really funny story. I remember my dad take me in the sixties, and it was it would be the first game of the season, which would be about end of August, beginning of September. The first Rangers Celtic game. Traditionally, Rangers always played Partick Thistle the first game, and the second game they would play Celtic, and they were playing. Rangers were playing at home. Night and this place is mobbed. It was a really nice summer's day, and Rangers scored quite early, within about ten minutes. And everybody's gone mental. Everybody's gone mad. So later on, they're playing. The Rangers are playing really well and they're getting a lot of chances but, but they don't no scoring and everybody's jumping about you know and this this guy this guy was playing really really low key and you know how people get paranoid what the fuck what's he doing you 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 what's the story with you how come you're not jumping up and down like the rest of us and he's <laughs> He pulled out this book, his note. He says, I've got a fiver. This is about 1968. I've got a fiver in Rangers to win one. <laughs> so I didn't want to be scoring any more goals. So I just laughed and let it go. But I mean, it was it was quite aggressive. You know, in those uh, days, people yeah. would have a drink. And, yeah. you know, and, and there was yes. a lot more venom. At, yeah. We're going back to the Rangers Celtic stuff. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more venom in the games yeah. then. Yeah. A lot more serious sectarianism yeah. yet. You know, yeah. by the time the 70s came, it was, you know, you know, up until then, it was basically no Catholics would play for Rangers. Mm -hmm. But Celtic weren't that daft. They, they, had, they signed everybody they could, quite rightly. Uh, but then Rangers were signing Italian players and German players, and that, right. that no longer became a thing. You know, and they, they then remember they signed Morris, Morris, yeah, Morris Johnson. And I remember Alec Andy Cameron saying, he says, it's the biggest scoop of the century. He says, he says, if the Queen had died that day, it wouldn't have made the front page. <laughs> Because the Morris Johnson story was so yeah. big. Yeah. yeah. So on that, we're going to have to cut this one, this one short. So thank you so much for joining us today. I think we'll come back to this subject again. There's so much more uh, to talk about, but we've just got to have a smaller episode uh, today. So everybody, thanks very much for being with us today. We've really enjoyed having your company and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye for now. <laughs>